What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy K Dog back in standard with a uh, Esper list built around a Layla Artful Provocateur. So, this is a card that we kind of wanted to build around uh, kind of off and on. And uh, it seems like every time I kind of uh, actually sit down to actually do one, then I see that Sidnotes has already kind of built uh, something similar to what I already had in mind. But um, no one's really been playing around Alayla lately since uh, Zendikar dropped and we had rotation and everything. So it's been something I've been uh, brewing around with. And uh, here's what I came up with. Some uh, nice janky casual fun, which is kind of what we're all about here. So Alayla, 4 mana, 2, 3. 1 white, blue, black for a legendary flying Death Hudge lifelink. Says other creatures you control with flying get plus 1, plus 0. And whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. So with her static ability here, basically it becomes a 2-1 creature with flying, right? Because she gives them a plus 1, plus 0 boost. And so we're combining that with things like Archon of Sun's Grace, because Archon of Sun's Grace also wants to make enchantments. It is a flyer, and also makes uh, flying tokens when you play enchantments. And flying tokens, of course, uh, work really well with Alayla as well. So Archon is a 4 mana 3 4 flying lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. Why is that relevant? Well, whenever your enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 2 2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. So we're really just trying to play pretty heavily into that synergy. Uh, one of their payoffs here is Wingspan Mentor. Pretty janky little card. All these. Uh, uh, Several of these abilities, uh, flying, vigilance, things like that, got these uh, little mentor type of effects here, 3 mana. Uh, this one's a 1-3, one, when it enters we put a flying counter on a non-human creature you control, and we pay 3 and tap it to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control with flying. So we're trying to build up a bunch of tokens, use the wingspan mentor's ability to tap and grow our tokens and just kind of kill our opponent here within the... Uh, once we get going with our tokens, just kind of build them up and kill them within a couple of turns. Um, so we're obviously very enchantment heavy, but also running Feldar Retreat as a way for us to kind of uh, make creatures or to put plus encounters on our existing creatures. So if we're if we've already got some flyers out, then we'll just make plus one counters with our landfall uh, triggers. Uh, we're not obviously in green where we're actively digging out lands, but we do have some card draw. So hopefully we can kind of leverage our card draw just to find lands naturally and then just get the landfall triggers that way. And obviously if we're not not having 1-1 uh, tokens then uh, or flying tokens of some kind, then we'll just make 2-2 two, two beasts and hopefully that will kind of uh, jump block or whatever help us stabilize until we can kind of get our uh, flying plan set up. So a little bit of removal here in Faith's Fetters, 4 mana in Aura says uh, enters the battlefield, you gain 4 life, so that'll buy us a little bit of breathing room against uh, more aggressive matchups. And Enchanted Permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. We get to enchant a permanent. So anything like Planeswalkers obviously have activated abilities, uh, enchantments, artifacts can have activated abilities as well, and of course works fine on creatures. A little bit expensive at 4 mana, but for the versatility, and um, whatnot, it's worth it. Obviously, we're already running all four Banishing Lights. Um, <clears throat> and we also have uh, four Mystic Subduels. Uh, it's a pretty interesting enchantment here. We get a Flash of Sin, give a creature minus two, minus zero. And most importantly, that creature loses all abilities. That's pretty fantastic. Uh, two Pacifism, so the creature can't attack or block. And then uh, we also have uh, four copies of Omen of the Seas, where we first kind of draw cards, find our land drops, uh, you know, scry, draw cards, so whatever, whatever we're looking for at the time. Obviously, we are in three colors, but uh, mostly we're white uh, and blue. Single black is uh, just there for uh, Layla. We don't have black for anything else, not even uh, well, one, one card out of the sideboard, which we'll get to, obviously. Uh, Glorious Anthem, of course, gives our creatures plus one, plus one. So all those tokens, those one ones and two twos we're making, we're given this uh, Anthem boost. And that'll help our cause as well. Mirror Maid can copy our uh, Banishing Lights and copy our Glorious Anthems. Uh, Felidar Retreats, things like that. So just nice utility here. And, well, that was uh, the deck. Pretty straightforward. Mana base here, we've got three planes, three Island, four Temple Night Knight, four Pathway Blight Climb, three Temple Silence, four Clearwater Pathway, and three Temple of Deceit. Sideboard here, we do have three Archon of Mary. Just a nice hate card against a lot of uh, matchups. Two, three, flyer. Uh, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. We're pretty mid rangey, so we're probably not going to be doing that. Uh, we do have some uh, things like the Mystics of Duel, which should be flashed in at our opponent's seed, uh, at our, on our opponent's turn. Things, same thing with the Omen of the Sea, so we don't necessarily mind uh, that uh, too much, really. Three neutralizes for the control and mid range side matchups. Ashok's Razor, same thing. It's an enchantment that's an encounter spell, so perfect synergy here. 
uh, two extinction events for like scoot swarms and other kind of go wide strategies. You know, we're more heavily into uh, focus on our tokens, so we can kind of hold up our, you know, our Archon and our Alela and just kind of wipe the world with extinction event and then get our creatures down and kind of start making our tokens and things like that. Uh, a couple copies of Baneslayer Ranger for the aggro matchups, two Elspeth Conqueror's Death for the mid range type matchups, and then uh, we're running lots of enchantments. So we're going to run he one Hela's Intervention, so if we get matched up against Shrines or any other enchantment uh, type heavy deck, we have at least one uh, one answer here, one Silver Bullet, uh, Hela's Intervention. Alright, that's the deck. Alright, man, it's a lunchbox. Sucks. Hmm. I don't know about that. Well, four lands, some card draw, removal, and uh, Archon. <clears throat> Seems pretty cool. We'll just try to scry into an Alela or something. And a Temple of Enlightenment. Right, we'll get all the lands here. Don't know we're up against, so we'll keep that. Balagate Recovery. <clears throat> Apply something more mid rangey but we'll see. Mono green so far. Unless they're hiding their uh, other land. Well, there's a Gilded Goose. Have fun not using your Gilded Goose anymore. Some green, they could have uh, Broken Wings or Return to Nature or Gem Razors. But we'll see. Okay, so it is Gruul. Or possibly Teamer. Obviously, I want to deal with Scoot Swarm immediately. <clears throat> One of those cards, like, if you don't have an answer for it, it's like you might as well just concede because it's just going to get out of control typically. Go for the Archon and see if we can dodge some removal. <clears throat> they do have two cards in hand. A lot of lands. Oh, we're missing a second white source. Uh, nicely done. I was going to play the pathway there, and then I was like, oh, we'll play the island since it's an island. White Source, Archon. <clears throat> okay, they have a food token they can sacrifice. I'm not sure if they have something else they're holding up here. Instant Speed, Scorching Dragon Fire, Fire Prophecy. <clears throat> Shia, that's pretty good. Seven, seven. We have a mana open to Wingspan Mentor and Omen of the Sea, so that's uh, what we're going to do here. We'll fire off the Omen on their turn, I guess. We're going to give our Archon of Sun's Grace flying. Um, enchant permanent, yeah. So it gets around the... Uh, a Shy is pretty annoying because it kind of tends to get around uh, things like Banishing Lights, because Banishing Light is non-land. They're just getting so much value. Unless they have untapped land, they cannot uh, gem raise here. So that's awesome for us. Oh, a shy I can tap. Yep. Alright. Well, they got the Banishing Light. <clears throat> get their Scoot Swarm back, but will Faith Fetters the Ashaya still, I think? Six lands, so yeah, they got the scoot swarm, so not fun to play against, not worth it unless you're running board wipes or just all the removals in the world. Uh, do need the faith's fetters for the Ashaya. 
any extinction events to kind of help us out with the um, Scoot Swarm shenanigans. And probably some Bane Slayers as well. Elspeth is interesting as well. Hmm. We have options. We have options. I'll just bring in some more hate here. Some more removal. Kind of shave off some of uh, some of the things to make room. Not sure we have room for all of that. So uh, we'll try that. You saw a basic land, so I don't know how good Archon will be, but obviously if they're going to be trying to uh, ramp into stuff, we can really slow down so they can only do one thing uh, per turn, if we draw into it, of course. Uh, Archon is good, but this hand, I think we need to dig for something else. Uh, I don't think the Omen of the Sea is particularly important to play here uh, on two, so we're going to... Play these tap lands down. Uh, retreat should be okay, but then until it gets gem razored. We'll see. So a double white for Archon this time. Don't think that would have mattered the last game. But we'll check it our Archon down first and then try to get some uh, enchantments going after it. So the opponent has a pretty uh, degenerate, deck, degenerate deck there with Scoot Swarm and Ashaya. Not super competitive, but if you don't have the right answers, obviously it's very difficult to uh, deal with. And they have just three cards in hand. Here to not be lands. Vastwood surge, grab some more lands, get some cobra triggers. Sure, what they're holding in hand that they uh, don't have anything to play here and didn't do anything else besides the Vastwood Surge. Another Felid Archery. I think that's just a little bit too uh, tempting. Gaining four, hitting for four in the air while we can is worth it. They have a Gilded Goose over there. All those food tokens to gain life. Ancient Green Warden must be nice. No Fabled Passages, so... <laughs> of course. Right on cue. Dryad, you can play extra lands. I mean, there's no nothing in play, at least, that they're really getting any huge benefit off of, uh, you know, abusing these landfall triggers. But last card in hand, we'll see what it is. Starix, that's pretty annoying. Sure, we got a bunch of lifelink, so we'll take it. Bane Slayer is interesting. I 
tapping like that. Uh, we want blue open, so we'll boom, boom, white, white, fill out our retreat. We'll flash this in, make another uh, dude, and then should resolve first, yep, 2-2, two, two. and we'll put some counters on them. Uh, those are both pretty good cards. I think we'll do it in that order. Alright, 6-7 Vigilance. You can block with your 5-7, that's fine. I still get the lifelink. Have that fail passage un, uh, uncracked. Just to land. Perfect. Well, our opponent kind of ran out of steam here, but they could obviously ch change that uh, any time here. So we have six mana open here. I'm not sure Archon is super worth it, but they could find like a, a exploration here that could uh, kind of draw them out of it, potentially. But I think just uh, Subduel and Faith's Fetters on the Starix Green Warden should be pretty powerful for us. Do this now so we can start attacking in with all of our flyers. Actually, do we just have lethal? 10, 19. Oh, we have exactly lethal. Booyah! Oh no, they have the they have the food token, so they're gonna be at three. Right, they gotta find something pretty impressive here. Almost forgot about that little food token that they made. Azusa. Yeah, I think that's going to cut it. So this deck is super sweet. If it can, uh, if it can kind of stabilize and survive a little bit, then we can do some pretty nasty things. Yeah, you can get your uh, land. You're empty-handed. They're going to swing all in and then concede, just because. You know, let me attack. They do? Okay. Well, they, uh, let us play it out there. Minus 20. No need to show them anything. Alright, I feel pretty good. Found some more removal that time. Dodged some of their more uh, crazy spells. I think we can run it back. There's a little, a little bit tempting to maybe bring in a little bit of counter magic. I don't think it's really worth it in this matchup. So obviously them going first could be a pretty big advantage if they go to Goose and all that going on first. Uh, on the draw, I think this is fine. Obviously we do need some blue manas, but we have double white. Uh, nice three drop here. Worst case scenario. Right, scry for a blue source. Do you like Banishing Light, but with this hand we just need more lands, please. Not worth taking that chance. Another white source. Alright, we'll play it out. Let's drop our Archon next turn. Just hope we find some lands. <clears throat> So turn three Archon should be pretty good against the them at this point. Uh, 
Uh, we don't, don't really need double black, so we'll just keep playing out on white. Archon of Emeria. Uh, if nothing else, we have Glorious Anthem. I haven't seen any interaction from them, but we, they do have Reach with the Ancient Green Warden, but I can't imagine they're running more than like a couple copies. But we'll see. Maybe they magically found their uh, removal spells against us that they haven't played the first two games. Layla. Well, we're stuck on lands. Attack for three. So, a little bit of sketchy keep, but you'd figure we'd find some blue lands here uh, before too long. Actually, Archon uh, works amazingly against Ashaya because they all come in tapped. It's, it's kind of hilarious. Land. It's a land. Well, even a fifth land for the Elspeth Conqueror's Death is okay. I mean, for being stuck on lands, we're doing okay. Scoot Swarm is super, super obnoxious. We have flying though, and they don't really have much reach. Besides the Green Warden, so we're gonna we're gonna play it out. You know, typically Scoot Swarm is just kind of one of those uh, annoying. Um, scoop worthy type of uh, effects. I mean, we're representing lethal. And they are not, so. For being uh, stuck on lands, we did a pretty good job. Maybe, we'll see. Obviously, they could just have a gem razor here, blow up our anthem, give themselves reach. Which would mean we're, we'd only be representing four damage. Oh, man. If we weren't uh, having this favorable board state, I definitely would concede against this nonsense. Uh, 11 plus 4 is 15. Do they have anything? Eh, just take it. Taking down the uh, Scoot Swarm Menace. Oh, yeah. All right, against the Yachty. Turn four, Layla. Why not? Temple of Triumph. Up against some kind of Jeskai build. Another Alela. Well, we got four lands, so we'll bottom that. Find some more enchantments. I guess it is untapped land, maybe. Could have been worth there to try to Banishing Light. Banishing Lights work great against Hallow Blade, so that's cool. I think we will actually keep that. I think we're up against some kind of a Boros aggro list. Question is, do we banish in light uh, now, or try to get the, uh... wow, robber of the rich. That was, uh, not expected. The robber's pretty annoying, so we'll uh, deal with that. Because um, they can copy our Banishing Light anyway, and then exile our own Banishing Light. It's not really ideal. Obviously, they're in Boros colors, so they could have their own 
banishing lights. Yeah, maybe we should have kept that uh, untapped land earlier. Now we're in a pretty awkward spot. We have fantastic answers. We're just probably not going to get there in time. This thing is Banishing Light does get around the Bone Crusher Giants effect, so that's cool. So we don't have to take two. I just need more interaction here, I think. Uh, down to 11, and we're taking four more here at seven, at least. I think we just want to get this Archon down ASAP. Two cards in hand. Just get our lifelink on board. And now enchantment would be amazing, but we'll see. We can't even play two things next turn, so I'm fine with bottoming a land here. We bottom a lot of land, so it probably means we're not going to find lands and be stuck on five uh, here for a while, but that's fine. <clears throat> so they have a Bone Crusher Giant or something. I'm trying to kill my Archon. They have the giant killer that could have tapped it down as well. But I guess they wanted to try to stomp it or something. Rimrock Knight. That stomp. Alright. We have six manas here. Tapping down my Archon Crown. And then they tap down the 2 2. Glass Casket, the token. And attack for 4. Wow. Yeah, unfortunately, our deck is just a little bit slow sometimes. I do like Fjordar's Retreat, but pretty slow against, w against what they're doing. Uh, I don't think we want Elspeth, Conqueror's Death. Extinction Event is interesting, but I don't know if they're that wide. Um, let's make room for a couple Archons. I don't know if we need all three. Also, Wingspan's pretty slow in this matchup. Fjordar's pretty slow. Bane Flayer's good, but once we kind of stabilize, then we're, uh, we're in pretty good shape, but... Unfortunately, if our, uh, if our opponent just gets off to a really powerful start, you know, three power, two powered haste, things like that, then it really pressures our life total a little bit more than we would like. And then they have the giant killer. Uh, they just had the, just, just, just enough there to push us before we'd stabilize. So it's unfortunate. I don't know if keeping the untapped land would have been uh, better earlier there with that first scry. I think we were still going to be wanting to banish him light. Uh, anyways, so I don't think going for the turn 4 Archon and hoping it survives to get uh, Banish Lights after that was the play. Uh, I don't think that would have worked out the way we wanted it to. So, alright, we have turn 2 Pacifism. The Archon, we're going to prioritize the Archon over Alele here. Oh man, that's beautiful. Bane Slayer Angel. Well, definitely have a very favorable hand uh, this time. Well, most of the lands were white last time, so they seem to be just doing a very light red splash. Maybe uh, that's just robber and. Um, 
Robber and Bone Crusher Giant seem to be the only reasons to run red. Well, we got our turn four Archon, and opponent's not putting any pressure on us in these first couple of turns. That's just the way we like it. Even Robber here isn't terrible. It's annoying, but I mean, I think we're at parity here. Even if they Robber attack, I'm pretty sure we have the same card still at this point. Terra Nika, you got it. I have double white already for Archon, so I'll drop that. And probably just get this Bane Slayer down, honestly. Terranika makes 4-4s, four but 5-5 five five is better than 4-4, four four, last I checked, so... Do that. Could have a Stomp here. Oh, they got a 4-4, four four, so yeah. Uh, no blocks. Actually, we'll probably Pacify and Banishing Light. If you don't have a board, then uh, it's going to be hard to win with your aggro list. Right, we got a couple of tokens. Hmm. So the Mystic Subdual as well is pretty good. Couple two two tokens. Stomp one of them. Well, they're free basically, so cool. Be interesting if they're running disenchants or uh, some way to deal with these auras that we got. Draw a land, probably a Layla Mystic Subduel on the Bone Crusher Giant, assuming that's what they go for. If we don't draw a land, probably just play the Bane Slayer. Oh wow, they bolted in to get another Terra Nika on board. We're leaving two mana open and then they can see. Okay. So they do have some powerful 3 drop with Terranika, but I don't think Elspeth Conqueror's Death is worth it. Extinction Event, maybe. I'll bring one Extinction Event, just, uh, just kind of a panic button, just in case. Especially now that we're on the uh, draw here. There's our Layla. Hopefully we can get our turn for a Layla online and um, try to showcase it. But triple tap land might be a little bit awkward. So they know we're not playing big creatures, so get the giant killer down. Subduel is fine. Obviously they could just have robber and giant killer and then Terranika here and uh, all that pretty bad for us. Let's get that off offline now. No more counters. Hollow Blade. I think we can take a, a turn here. That's uh, it's gonna be pretty powerful against them. Swing four. <clears throat> well, if we can stabilize here, we'll be in decent shape. We can tap down, hit us for six. Untap land would be pretty great to get this Bane Slayer Angel down ASAP, but. Layla does have Lifelink. Now 
they didn't even uh, tap down. Didn't even use the giant killer. Now there's an untapped land. Seems kind of weird doing this, but I think we need to banishing light the giant killer because that can tap down our Layla. If we were to get some more tokens online, then obviously we won't, be, won't care about it. But as it stands, uh, I want to get a couple triggers for our Layla and get that giant killer off the board because that's going to really hurt us over the longer run. Like these tokens can chump block the Hollow Blade all day, especially if they as they run out of uh, threats. Uh, we'll hold up the open omen of the sea to flash in a token and see if they have some kind of a stomp or something for this one. And if they don't have an answer for the token, then we'll definitely uh, we're definitely gonna block what they're doing. And hopefully, Bane Slayer Angel next turn, and then follow it up with uh, you know Glorious Anthem and whatever else we can draw ourselves into. I was actually surprised at the power level of this deck. Once we stabilize, uh, it gets pretty crazy. That's just kind of the tricky thing is getting to that point. Elspeth, yikes. You gonna make one ones? Probably what I would do, but we're at eight and they only see one blocker, so I if we could go for the uh, plus two plus one on their creatures here. Three cards in hand, hope you have some stuff you don't mind discarding. Uh, mentor is interesting, but not in this spot. Yeah, we're taking those blocks, we're soaking up that damage. It's up to you to discard. <clears throat> Obviously, discard uh, does uh, does help feed the escape on. Wow, uh, Elspeth escaping. Jeez, they actually discarded Bane Slayer Angel and Maul of the Skyclaves. That's uh, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Good cards. There are ways from a. Uh, need six mana. So there are ways from doing that. Bane Slayer Angel is awfully tempting. But I think we just want to eliminate one of these guys. So we'll Mystic Subduel. Uh, could have waited, but I think I'm fine with doing this all now. And we'll have three power in the air with lifelink and two uh, tokens back. So we'll get rid of Elspeth and gain some life. All right, the scry could be pretty important. What do we got? It is an enchantment. It is an enchantment. Yeah, we'll keep it. I mean, we're probably Bane Slayer Angeling, but there's definitely a world where we thought our retreat land and put counters on our creatures. Yikes. Really? Glorious Anthem. Really? I would have gone to Layla all day there. 100%. Taking two here. A robber of the rich. I mean, Bane Slayer Angel probably seals the deal here. I 
I think gaining two is worth it. We have a 6-5 life linker as well, if they don't have a answer for it. Okay. So 5-3 first strike, 6-5 first strike. All right, I think we got it. Whew, I was close. Oh, ho, 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 ho. man. Whew. Stabilizing is rough, but once you do, man, just look at that. Look at that. Glorious Anthem, though, man. If they had gone after Alayla, I definitely think they would have had a real shot there. Uh, obviously, we did have the Baneslayer Angel in hand that they did not know about. Uh, they were pretty aggressive with those Hallow Blades and discarding some pretty juicy stuff. Man. But, um,. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, Layla plus Archon of Sun's Grace with all the enchantments running, even the Feldar's Retreat. Man, this deck is spicy, yo. This deck is spicy. Just, uh, you need to run all that enchantment removal for the, kind of, the early turns. Um, it's tempting to run something like a Shatter to the Sky, um, but since we are leaning heavily onto certain creatures, I don't really want to run it. That's why we're doing the Extinction event. But yeah, you really need to find your in, your enchantments uh, quickly. And especially with things like Season Hellblade in the format, like these Pacifisms and Mystic Subduals work really, really well. Subduel is a card that I've actually been pretty pretty impressed by, generally speaking. Uh, as far as enchantment removal goes, it's pretty pretty good effect, especially 2 mana, flash speed. Um, you know, the creatures, if it's really powerful, it still gets some decent level of power, but you nerf it by minus 2 and then it'll lose all abilities, so like an Elder Gargroth. Sure, it's a 4-6, but it doesn't, you know, draw you cards, make beasts, and do all those other things. It's just a 4-6, dude. No Vigilance, no Trample, no Reach. Uh, Omen of Sea, just kind of a nice way to uh, trigger our, um, you know, Archon and our Olela. And um, kind of dig for whatever we're looking for, you know, that Black Mana Source or that Fourth Land or, you know, whatever we need. Uh, I think it showcased the Wingspan Mentor, unfortunately. We don't really get into those kind of grindier matchups, but once you... Uh, uh, if you can, uh, Wingspan Mentor is pretty fun. I was definitely looking for a deck to kind of utilize this card as well. It definitely could be something you you know you take out. Um, probably not super important, but it definitely ups the fun factor quite a bit by putting counters in all your little one one and two two tokens, which you know obviously pretty small, but once you kind of get them bigger, it's uh, pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, having that. Uh, Bane Slayer Angel on the sideboard is pretty clutch. You know, we're, like I said, we're really struggling against some of those aggressive matchups. You need kind of these type of, uh, this type of effect to kind of help you stabilize. And uh, you could run the Shadow of the Skies, uh, but like I said, since we are kind of leaning on certain creatures, I don't really want to do something like that. Obviously, you can, you can play around it, but uh, it's like Extinction Event, so you can kind of play, play, your, play your game and try to make tokens. If it doesn't work out, then you can kind of fall back on the Extinction Event and you only lo lose maybe part of your board and not like everything with the Shadow of the Sky and try to start over. Um, but obviously Shadow of the Sky is a safer safer bet. But yeah, uh, definitely some fun some fun to be had with this list. Um, definitely, like I said, it struggles in the early game. You do need to stabilize the Faith Fetters, even though it's a pretty medi mediocre card overall. Obviously it has great synergy and the four life that you gain is actually pretty important. But yeah, we got the Archon to kind of gain you life. Even Alayla herself has lifelink in addition to flying and death touch. Like, she's a pretty powerful card. Kind of crazy. She doesn't really see more play. Just four mana is a little bit steep. Um, and just being a 2-3 is, you know, it's okay. But um, yeah, super fun once you kind of get your board state going and get kind of set up. The Glorious Anthems work extremely well to kind of tr get your enchantment triggers and actually pump these up so that these are actually real threats. Four fives. And things like that, and then fill out our retreat. It's just kind of the nice uh, little little bow at the end here to kind of make everything uh, just super super sweet. Uh, just you know, it's a powerful card uh, in general, and it works extremely well with what we're doing here by uh, making all of our tokens just super big, which is kind of what we're trying to do here with the Wingspan Mentor and everything uh, like that. So it doesn't even matter what kind of deck we're up against. Once we stabilize, we can just make our creatures bigger than whatever our opponent is doing, and eventually we'll. You know, we'll, we'll be able to punch through for pretty significant damage and uh, close out some games. And, uh, yeah, Mana Base has been pretty consistent. You know, we just need that one black source for Alayla. So once you get your temple, uh, you know, any any single black source down, you can play your pathways on, uh, you know, blue or white. And, uh, you know, you're good to go. 
you know, we have double blue and double white spells in here. Um, so obviously it can be a little bit tricky at times, but for the most part, it's been pretty pretty smooth for me. And um, yeah, sideboard plan has felt pretty solid as well. The Archon, uh, definitely pretty effective in certain matchups and has felt really good in this particular list as well. Ashox Racer, not a card that's seen a whole lot of play, but it's an enchantment that already synergizes what we're trying to do, counter spell. So that's pretty cool to kind of feature this in something. Uh, of course, Elspeth is just always just a good card in general. And then got to play with things like Mirror Maid and Glorious Anthem, but they don't see a ton of play. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, make sure you uh, jank with a bird.